everyone, Abby here, and welcome back to my channel for Tech Tuesday, or welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be reviewing the new, released in 2022, Fitbit Sense 2. But before I get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed so you can stay tuned to all my new videos dropping weekly, and so you can help the channel grow. I have this in the color Lunar White Platinum. So it has a Lunar White colored band, then it has a platinum case. And it was released in some other great colors which you could see on screen. So the current prices right now are actually the sale prices. They are currently on sale as of recording. So the current price is $299.99 Canadian and $199.99 American. So they're both actually $100 off. I have the regular price on screen for you guys as well if you're interested. One great thing about the Fitbit Sense 2 is that even though it's such a new smartwatch, it is going on sale quite frequently. So you can definitely grab it for a great price on one of those sale days. And just to let you guys know, I do have timestamps in the description below if you're looking to jump to a certain part of the video like battery life for example. So now I'm going to get into the spec highlights to give you guys an idea of what this smartwatch can do. The Fitbit Sense 2 here has a, an AMOLED color display, has touchscreen operation, a 24 millimeter infinity band, a battery life up to six days, it has Alexa voice assistant built in, it has 24 hour heart rate monitoring and abnormal heart rate alerts, you can track your blood oxygen saturation. It has basic watch features like timers and stopwatch, and it does have alarms. It tracks a variety of activities like run, hit, yoga. It has built-in GPS. It's water resistant up to five ATM or 50 meters, so you can wear this in the rain, in the shower, and in the pool. It also tracks your daily metrics like your steps, your calories burned, your floors climbed. It has a built-in mic and speaker, so you can do Bluetooth calling directly from your wrist using your smartwatch. It has an EDA scan, which reads your body responses. It has relaxation breathing sessions. And I've thrown some more on screen for you guys as well. Now, these are not all of the features about this smartwatch, but these are definitely the most important, I think. And all right, guys, this is what it looks like on me. And the Fitbit Sense 2 here does come with a large and a small band. I do have a seven inch wrist, and right now I am wearing the large band. And I'm gonna show you guys what the small band looks like on me as well. So I'm gonna show you guys how to change the bands on here. So at the bottom of the watch here, we have this little kind of clasp thing. So you're just gonna pull that, and then you kind of pull this out. You're gonna take the other band, line it up, and then push it in. And when you hear a snap, it is in place. So it's very easy to change the band here. And this does fit a variety of wrist sizes, which I have on screen for you. So here's what the small band looks like on me. And I do find this band pretty comfortable to wear. So what do you guys think about the look of the watch here? So you can do Bluetooth calling on this smartwatch. So if a call is coming in, you can go ahead and accept it or deny it. And from my experience taking calls on this, this is the best that Fitbit has done so far. The calls are clear sounding on both ends. It has worked well so far, there's been no dropping. All right guys, so now I'm gonna show you a call demo. So I'm gonna show you what it sounds like on the watch here and then what it also sounds like on the other end. And in order to do any calls on your smartwatch, you must be connected via Bluetooth to your smartphone. All right guys, so now I'm in a completely different room. This is how the audio sounds from the smartwatch. You can decide for yourself if it sounds good or not. And now I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it sounds like from the recipient's end. All right guys, so now you have me speaking directly on the Fitbit and two. what it sounds like from the recipient's end. You guys are hearing the quality from my house phone. It might sound better on a smartphone, but hey, I'm working with what I got. <laughs> um, I think it sounds really good both ways. So if you are looking to use this to, you know, Bluetooth call it on the go, if you're on like a run or a walk, or if you're working, maybe your hands are busy and you don't have an option to grab your phone, you definitely have the option to call using this. You know, my favorite thing about it is that when I was taking calls on it, people couldn't even tell I was taking a call from the smartwatch. So I think that's great that they were able to improve it because in the past, when I did Bluetooth calling through some Fitbit devices, your voice kind of sounded a little bit distorted and quiet and sometimes it cut out, but I haven't had any any issues here with the Bluetooth calling, so I'm happy about the performance here. So something unique to the Fitbit Sense and Sense 2 is that we do have an EDA scan. So you guys might be wondering what is an EDA scan? There's like this sensor going along. It 
basically you take the palm of your hand and put it on top of your smartwatch and it's going to read how many responses get sent to your watch like honestly i find it very gimmicky i don't really like i don't find it helpful personally <laughs> if an eda response is not something that you care about then you might want to look into the versa line instead because you don't have that and you save a lot of money also i am currently doing a giveaway of this lululemon everywhere belt bag so if you're interested make sure you head to that video to enter it's at the top right or in the description below when you're done watching this so when it comes to activity tracking and accuracy there, I'm finding this smartwatch to be pretty good. So when it comes to your daily steps, I'm finding it to be pretty accurate. Sometimes it's a little bit off, maybe like, you know, 5% off. It might record steps a little bit higher than it should, but it's honestly not too bad and it's better than a lot of other Fitbits I have used. When it comes to activity tracking, we have a lot of different options here. So we have our steps, we have our active minutes, your calories burned as well as your floors climbed and your total distance. So when it comes to doing GPS activities outdoors, like runs or walks, I'm finding that the GPS has been pretty consistent. It is not dropping on me at all. Although it does take some time at the beginning to connect a little bit more than I would like. It takes about, you know, one to four minutes to connect, which is a little bit long for me. And when I am tracking any indoor activities, like, like a HIIT workout or cardio, I'm finding that it's tracking my heart rate pretty accurately and the calories burned and everything as well. Here's the display indoors under some lighting. You can see it's definitely reflective. There are different brightness settings you can do. I have mine set at dim just to preserve battery life, but you can go to normal and max as well. And I will turn off the light so you guys can see how it looks in a dark situation. So right now we have it at dim, normal, and max brightness. And now I'm gonna show you guys what the display looks like outdoors. All right guys, so now I'm gonna show you the basics of how to use this smartwatch. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is turn on the display. Now to do that, you can tap the display or you can press the button. Or if you have this turned on, which is a screen wake, this button right here, you can go ahead and turn the watch towards your face and the screen will light up. You can go ahead and swipe down and you're gonna see your little shortcut menu here. So you can quickly access your settings or things like do not disturb, you can turn that on and off. And then for your full settings menu, you can click that and see all the different things that you can customize. You can press this button right here to go back. Now, once at the home page, if you swipe up, you can see any notifications that you do have. For me, I have a couple of notifications. I have an email right here, and you can go ahead and scroll through and read the entire email here. Once you are done, you can either clear it, delete it, or you can open it, and that will open it in your phone. Once again, the back button here. So when you're back at the home page, you can swipe left or right and you're going to see all of your different apps that you do have installed, like your weather, your timers, alarms, EDA, all of that stuff is going to be here. And if at any point you want to see a bit more information, you can click on it and it's going to show you everything in kind of a more streamlined view. You can just kind of swipe up. And if you want to start a workout, you can use the workout kind of app here, which is right here. And then if you go into this area, you can see all the exercises here. So I'm just gonna show you guys all the exercises that are available right now. A good amount of activities, I believe there's around 40. And if you wanted to start one, just click on it and click that again. Now when it comes to this button here, we can do a couple things with it. So if you tap it once, when the display is open, you open up your most recent app. If you double tap it, you open up this little shortcut menu here so you can quickly access your wallet. You can do voice assistant, stuff like that. And if you hold it, you can access one shortcut app. So you can set that to be whatever you want, like voice assistant, um, your wallet, exercises, stuff like that if you wanna open up a certain thing quickly. And that's it guys, that's the basics of how to use this smartwatch. I do find it pretty straightforward and easy to use, so I think this is definitely a great watch for you know beginners to the smartwatch world because it is pretty simple to use overall. You cannot change your watch faces on the watch, which I find quite annoying. You do have to do that in the Fitbit app. So coming over to the Fitbit app here, there are a lot available and you can go ahead and toggle free or paid and then if you find one you like, you can just click on it install and you're good to go and you can save up to five on the app here for quick changes 
So I will show you guys all of the apps that are available. Here they are. There's nothing else. Um, this is all that is available right here. And when you go to tiles, so you can go ahead and you can add anything out of here. So these are all of the available apps or tiles, which they call them, that you can have on your smartwatch here. So once again, it does have a quoted battery life up to six days, and that is from Fitbit. With my actual usage, doing things like GPS walks, runs, daily Bluetooth calling, and more, I have gotten on average four to five days of battery life out of this watch. Now for me, I think it's okay. I only really have to charge it once a week, which is not too bad. I would prefer it to be a little bit longer, but I think this is definitely something that can fit into a lot of people's lifestyles because you only really have to charge it once, maybe twice a week, depending on your usage. I know I just told you guys again, average of four to five days, but if you put this on the always on display mode, your battery life is going to die on you very, very fast. I'm talking this could not last me a full day. So if you go ahead and you click that and you have always on, so this is what you have here, a low power usage watch face. There are some watch faces on the Fitbit app that are supposed to be always on compatible, but this is the one I have on right now. So for me, I would prefer to just turn this off and have just, you know, my regular one there. I don't wanna be charging my smartwatch every single day. If you're someone who's okay with doing that, then you definitely have the option to use the always on display. So when it comes to sleep tracking, that is where Fitbit excels over pretty much everyone else, in my opinion. Here is my sleep from last night. I do wanna say that you cannot access this from your smartwatch alone. You need your smartphone to process it and then it sends the data to your watch. So that's something I don't like. I would have preferred that your smartwatch could be smart enough to analyze your sleep and you don't have to rely on your phone for everything. But once you do get that on here, we can see your sleep duration we can see the sleep score 80 percent and then we could see a little graph here so my sleep goal is seven hours i didn't hit that so the little graph here is not completely full and then you could see also our menstrual health so for many women out there we have this option on here it basically shows the stage you're in for your menstrual cycle um, but you can't track any of your symptoms or anything on this watch you do have to do that on the app so for those of you still watching, thanks for sticking with me. I'm hoping you're enjoying this video and just letting you guys know a sneak peek on what's coming soon. So I'm gonna be comparing the Fitbit Sense 2 here to the Garmin Venue 2S. So make sure you have your post notification bell turned on so you don't miss that video. It's gonna be dropping on a Tech Tuesday soon. And all right guys, considering the price, the quality, the color, the performance, the battery life, the comfort, and everything like that, I would go ahead and give this an 8.4 out of 10. And I definitely do give it a thumbs up. So if you guys are interested in picking up the Fitbit Sense 2 here, I've gone ahead and left a link down in the description for you to use. All right guys, now some of you might be wondering if the Fitbit Sense 2 is worth the upgrade over the Fitbit Sense 1. Now, in my opinion, I would say no. Um, I don't see enough changes here that justify upgrading. Even if you're talking about like accuracy, battery life, ease of use, all of that is very, very similar. I recently reviewed the Fitbit Sense, you know, is it worth it in 2022? Find that video up here if you're interested. But basically I said, yes, it was worth it in 2022. And right now with the new Sense 2 out, the Fitbit Sense original has dropped a lot in price. So if you are interested in getting this smartwatch, you might want to consider that one instead. And if there's anything I missed today that you want to know, just go ahead and drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, guys, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.